So welcome to this episode of Aussie English Video Breakdown, guys. This is episode number two, and today I want to break down a scene with numerous expressions in it, often used in Australian English, from a movie called Chopper. So Chopper is a film that came out in the year 2000 in Australia, and you may or may not know the famous actor Eric Banner, who's an Australian actor. Eric Banner, that's him in the photo there portraying Chopper. And the character Chopper is a real-life infamous uh, criminal from Australian sort of culture and history around Tasmania and Victoria. He was infamous in the 70s, 80s and 90s in Victoria. And so I think he actually got away with a whole number of murders because he killed a bunch of drug dealers. And so the police may or may not have sort of condoned it and looked the other way, but he's a pretty famous character here in Australian sort of more contemporary history. So if you mention him to most Australians, they'll know who you're talking about. Anyway, it's a really interesting scene from this film and I thought I'd break it down. So I'll play it now for you guys and then I'll break down the different expressions from the scene. It's me. What the fuck do you want, huh? Well, is Neville home? Inev! Inev, hello, man! Disgusting, man! Disgusting, man! What the fuck do you want? Look, Nev, I just come over to apologise, mate. How the fuck did you find where I live? Look, don't worry about it. Look, I'm a bit embarrassed about what happened the other night. I, I just come over to bloody apologise and clear it up. You mad bastard. <laughs> oh, you got a nerve coming around here. I'm fucking about this is a very good neighbourhood, mate. Okay? I'm fucking around. You understand? Open the gates, Nev. Come on. I'm going to let you in. You're playing the game by my rules, right? Yeah, it's your house, mate. You know, it's your house. Yeah, it's a lovely house, too. Full, full respect, mate, you know? There better be respect, mate. Total respect. Hey, is that back garage shut, Nick, or what? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Check it out. You're bloody kidding. How well have I done, mate? Eh? Who's the king? Eh? Who's the king? Huh? Very nice. Hey, what are you doing, mate? Throwing your cigarettes on the grass. Nick, pick it up, will you? Pick it up. Oh, Get it off. Don't throw it. Jesus. What are you guys doing? You're following me around like a bad smell. It's like you want to fuck me up the ass. Go inside. Mix some fucking drinks oh, or something, right, will you? Get out of here. Fuck. That explains your limp. Hey? Can you dive in? No, nah, sorry. No grubs allowed. Yeah, come and look at me babies, will you? They beautiful or what, eh? <laughs> Whatever you do, don't use a name on those bowls, all right? They're aliases. What? Well, don't look at me like that. What? Some smart cunt comes here, looking to rip me off, uses those names, and those dogs will fucking eat them to pieces. Here, check this out. Neville? Hey? Are you bloody right? I should report you to the fucking RSPCA, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. Nah, mate. They like it. Nah, they do. We dogs do. Keeps them alert, eh? <laughs> Can't let's see if those poo jabbers have got the fucking drinks ready, can't. So the first expression that I'm going to break down is to clear something up. Look, don't worry about it. Look, I'm a bit embarrassed about what happened the other night. I'll just come over to bloody apologise and clear it up. So you would have seen this right at the start of the scene. I just come over to bloody apologize and clear it up. This is when Chop is at the gate and he's trying to convince Neville to let him in. So to clear something up is to explain or solve, say, a problem, an issue or a misunderstanding. And if you watch the movie, you'll understand why he's come over to Neville's house to clear things up or to clear it up. And so you could use this expression if, say, I had a fight with my girlfriend, but we cleared it up later. That's sort of like, I had a fight with my girlfriend, but later on, you know, we kissed and made up. I apologized and we cleared things up. Look, don't worry about it. Look, I'm a bit embarrassed about what happened the other night. I'll just come over to bloody apologize and clear it up. So the next expression is to have a nerve. You mad bastard. 
<laughs> oh, you got a nerve coming around here. And Neville says this to Chopper when Chopper's arrived at his house. And he says, hey, you got a nerve coming around here. So he's saying, you've got a nerve coming over to my house uninvited, you know, after what you've done. So to have a nerve is sort of a way of saying that you are doing something unsuitable or impolite with without seeming to be embarrassed about behaving that way. So it's kind of like, it's just another way of saying you kind of, you've got a lot of balls doing what you're doing because you know you shouldn't be doing this, but you're doing it anyway. So you've got a lot of nerve. You've got a nerve doing this. And so you could use this in another sense saying, you've got a nerve showing up to my party uninvited. So it'd be like, you weren't invited. You knew you weren't invited. You knew you shouldn't be coming, but you came anyway. That's pretty unsuitable and impolite. You've got a nerve coming to my party uninvited. <laughs> oh, you got a nerve coming around here. I'm fucking about this is a very good neighborhood, mate. Okay? I'm fucking around. To fuck around or to fuck about, that's used in this line here by Neville when he says, no fucking about. This is a very good neighborhood, okay? No fucking around. So you can use the to fuck around or to fuck about, obviously, in the same sentence. You can switch between about and around. It means exactly the same thing. It means to behave incredibly stupidly or in an unwanted way. So he's saying this to Chopper. Again, if you've seen the film, you'll understand why. Chopper's a bit unpredictable and does stupid things. He pulls his gun out. He fires it in public places. He beats people for no reason and Neville's saying, if you come over to my house, it's a good neighborhood here. Don't fuck around. Don't fuck about. Behave yourself. And so you could use this in a sense. Um, here in the example sentence, you could use it by saying, someone came in and started fucking around with my dog by being mean and teasing him and chasing him around the garden. So it's a very negative way of saying to screw around, to mess around, to muck around, to play around. And obviously, it's a curse word, it's a swear word, it's a way of really, really accentuating the fact that you're screwing around or stuffing around or misbehaving, so to fuck around. It's not the kind of thing you would say unless it was with really close friends or you were incredibly angry and so you don't mind being rude. You wouldn't use this in formal situations. I fucking about this is a very good neighborhood, mate, okay? I fucking around. You understand? Open the gates, Nev. Come on. I'm going to let you in. You're playing the game by my rules, right? So the next one is to play the game by someone's rules. And Neville says this to Chopper when he's just about to let him into the house. He says, I'm going to let you in. You're playing the game by my rules, all right? So he's saying to Chopper, I'll let you inside but you have to behave. You have to do what I think you should be doing in my house. So the definition of to play the game by someone else's rules, by someone's rules, is to behave as someone thinks you should be behaving in whatever situation it is, whether it's uh, coming to a party or you're actually literally playing someone's game and they have defined the rules by which you have to play the game. So you could use this in an example by saying, if I let you come to my birthday party, You've got to play by my rules and not fuck around. So using that, that last expression there that we just went over. I'm going to let you in. You're playing the game by my rules, right? So this phrase expression to follow around like a bad smell, this is used all the time. And Neville uses this talking to his mates when he's showing Chopper around his garden. And he says, what are you guys doing? You're following me around like a bad smell. Jesus. What are you guys doing? You're following me around like a bad smell. It's like you want to fuck me up the ass. Go inside. If you follow someone around like a bad smell, it just means that you're following them really closely. So you're following someone around very closely. Like if you were smelling incredibly bad, it would be hard for you to separate yourself from that smell. So wherever you go, the smell goes with you if you smell bad. And so you could use this in an example sentence here. He follows his older brother around at school like a bad smell. So this could be two little brothers, one older, one younger. And every time they're out to lunch or out playing in the playground, the younger brother is following the older one around everywhere in the same way that if the older brother smelt bad, the bad smell would be following the older brother around everywhere. He says, 
What are you guys doing? You're following me around like a bad smell. It's like you want to fuck me up the ass. Go inside, mix some fucking drinks right, or something. Right, will you just get out of here? Fuck. That explains your limp. Hey? Can you dive in? No, sorry, no grubs allowed. So, to be a grub or a grub, so a grub is the uh, kind of insect you'll find under bark or in the soil or under rocks. And in this instance, Neville says to Chopper, no, sorry, no grubs allowed, when Chopper asks if he can dive into Neville's pool. And when he says, no, sorry, no grubs allowed, he's effectively saying that Chopper is someone who's unclean, whether it's how he behaves or it's his appearance. So if you're a grub, you're someone who's literally or figuratively unclean, dirty. Your behavior could be dirty and unclean. You know, you could swear a lot or you could appear and literally be covered in dirt and be unclean. And so he's saying, no, you can't go in the pool because you're a grub effectively saying that if Chopper dived in, he'd make the pool dirty. And so you could use this in an example sentence here. Look at the way this guy eats. He's such a grub. And that would be suggesting that he eats really messily. So he covers himself in his food as he's eating. And he's a grub. Can you dive in? No, sorry. No grubs allowed. So in this example, Neville says the phrase to rip me off or to rip someone off. Well, don't look at me like that. What? Some smart cunt comes here, looking to rip me off, uses those names, and those dogs will fucking eat them to pieces. So this phrase is to rip off or to rip someone off. Neville says to rip me off. And he says the phrase, what? Some smart cunt comes here looking to rip me off, uses those names, and those dogs will fucking eat him to pieces. And effectively what he's saying here is that if someone comes over to his house and is looking to rip him off he's saying someone's wanting to steal from him so neville in this film is a drug dealer he deals speed and he's making a bit of money from it and lives in a really nice house and he's got these dogs to protect him and he's changed the names on the dog's bowls so that anyone who tries to come over and rip him off or steal from him because he's got money if they try and use the names on the dog's bowls, they're not the real dog's names and so the dogs aren't going to answer to them. So you could use this in an example sentence. I came home and found someone had broken in and ripped off all my drugs. And that would be insinuating that someone has broken into your house and they've stolen all the drugs that you had in the house. Well, don't look at me like that. What? Some smart cunt comes here looking to rip me off, uses those names and those dogs will fucking eat them to pieces. So in this last sentence, guys, we're going to go over the phrase to eat to pieces, which means to rip to pieces, to attack and maul someone severely. So you don't literally have to eat someone to pieces where you would imagine that someone has been eaten to the point of being chopped up into very, very small pieces, but it can more figuratively mean someone's been attacked by an animal. And so Neville says in this sentence, what? Some smart cunt comes here looking to rip me off and uses those names and those dogs will fucking eat him to pieces. He's saying that the dogs are just going to attack anyone who tries to come and steal from him if they try and use the names on the bowls because the names on the bowls aren't the real dogs' names. So he's, he's tricking any potential thieves that come over. And so you could use this in an example sentence saying the crocodile ate the tourist to pieces when she fell in the water. And so that could literally be that the crocodile tore the person up and ate them in pieces or it could be that the person survived but they were bitten by the crocodile and you're sort of exaggerating by saying they were eaten to pieces. So that's this episode of Aussie English Video Breakdowns, guys. I hope you liked it. If you have any suggestions, feel free to comment below or send me a message. And if you like it and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you later, guys.